Your Coca-Cola bottler present Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Two and two and six and seven. Can't you count yourself, Claudia? Mama, now you've made me lose it. Lose what, dear? I have to begin all over again. Two and two and six and seven and five and one. A little softer, Claudia. A little softer what? Count to yourself a little softer. Oh, was I counting out loud? Think out loud if you like, but count to yourself. You're not very hospitable, I must say. I've been sitting at that desk adding up figures ever since dinner. What are you doing? Figuring up my adding. Mrs. Brown, if you will be wise, you won't ask. I should know better, David. When I see her sitting there chewing a pencil and wrinkling her forehead... Oh, me, life is certainly complicated. Certainly is, when you don't know how to add. It must be. Will you just look at this? Well, I can't spend less money on food, and I can't spend less money on clothes, and I certainly can't spend less money on running the house, so I can't spend less money. Yeah, nothing complicated about that. Oh, you'd be surprised. Oh, tomorrow I have to remember to write a check out for that feed Fritz bought. Why don't you write out the check now? Spend all that money tonight? I should say not. Oh, David, are you going to use the car tomorrow? Mm-hmm. So do I. Oh, darn. I was going to drive down into town because I have to see a couple of jobs on the way in. Oh, and I have to take the baby for his checkup to Dr. Bowery. Well, can't you use the pickup? Nope. Fritz has to go up to Hartford again, so he'll use it. Use a taxi. Have you ever tried to use a taxi out here in Eastbrook? It is easier to hitch on to the tail of a comet. Claudia, you certainly have problems. I certainly have. It's time we started spring cleaning, too. Claudia, will you toss me that ball of wool? Yeah. Here, catch my... Thanks, dear. Well, while you're up, the, uh, the matches, darling. I'm not up. Oh, you looked as if you were about to be up. Who do? you? We have to start spring cleaning. Yes, we heard you the first time. Why don't you wait until spring? Oh, because then it's spring, there are other things to do. Spring cleaning should always be done by spring. Well, no. Oh. Do you mind telling me how you know exactly when spring cleaning is going to come? I don't. Oh, That's you don't? That's another problem. David, I don't know how she survives. Her I life's hardly chock do. full of promises. Chock and full, problems. right. Mm, very complicated, very complicated. Laugh indeed. if you will, but you are not running a big house. Neither are you. Bertha is. Oh, thank heavens for Bertha. I want to take down the window drapes to start getting the spring ones up. Uh, we don't have spring ones, do we? No, that makes it even more complicated. I can see how it would. Then I have to get the outside furniture ready. Goodness and... me, I don't know how you're going to manage. Oh, I do. You're going to help me. What? Well, I refuse to take the job. Your refusal is not accepted, Mrs. Brown. Well, Claudia, while you're up, will you toss me the matches? I'm still not up, David. Oh, so you're not. Listen, why don't you get up? Shakespeare is purring on my foot. Oh, I see. You wouldn't disturb him, of course, would you? All of a sudden, you think of the cat. Poor little Shakespeare, a mere excuse. You ought to be glad he's that much. And that's something else. I ought to take the dogs to the vet. Why should you do that? What for? For a checkup. Oh. Listen, maybe tomorrow when I take the baby to Dr. Barry, I'll take the dogs too. Dr. Barry is not a vet. Well, dogs are like people. Say, maybe a vet can take care of babies as well as dogs. Maybe we ought to switch to a vet. Do you know that that is my grandson that you're talking about? You make it less complicated. Now shut up, everybody. I'm going back to my figuring. David, did you hear her to tell us to shut up? I'm not complaining, Mrs. Brown. Just so she shuts up herself. Two and two and four and six and... To make matters worst of all, we have to go to Nancy Riddle's to dinner tomorrow night. Well, that's in the evening. You can't do any of these <sighs> things in the evening, so what's the difference? Only I have to wash my hair. Oh, what a tragedy. Well, I can see there's no point in talking to you at all. Well, as far as about going to Nancy Riddle's, I am full of sympathy. 
I don't know why Julia is forever trying to stuff Nancy Riddle down our throat. Julia thinks Nancy get two jobs. She knows all the right people around East. I'm not interested in designing air-cooled hothouses or steam-heated swimming pools, and I I wish my sister-in-law would realize it once and for all. Julia's being very sweet, so don't be ungrateful, darling. Except I wish she'd stayed in Cuba, wherever she was, so I wouldn't have to wash my hair in the middle of everything. Oh, why don't you wash your hair in the shower, Claudia? My mama. Thanks for the suggestion. Well, you're welcome. Say, when did Julia and Hartley get back? Oh, I don't know exactly. Julia just called today to tell me about tomorrow night. She and Hartley are coming up tonight. They're staying over at Nancy Riddle's. Oh, my poor brother. Mm. Well, maybe he doesn't mind her and her orange hair and her servants as much as you would, darling. Worse. How do you know? He has gallbladder trouble. Poor thing. He's so big and dignified looking. You know, I'm very fond of Hartley, and Julia's a very good wife for him. She's not very healthy-like, but she's brilliant at stocks, you said. Well, why worry about them so? They've been married over ten years. They, I think you were, you were about nine at the time. Well, that wasn't my fault, David. Besides, Hartley always makes me feel maternal. Then now's the time for you to go back to your knitting. Yep. If anything else happens in my life, I am not going to be able to manage... Two and two and four and six. Now, that is the sort of thing I mean. I see. What sort of thing? Just as I'm about to carry one, the doorbell rings. Oh. Always something to complicate things. Well, do you want to carry one and I'll answer the door? Heavens, no. I'd rather answer it than carry one any day. Who do you suppose it is? Oh, Julian Hartley. No, it can't be there for tomorrow, not tonight. Well, open and see. Cross your fingers, Mama. I can't let anything interfere with my schedule. Well, I won't so be able nice. to keep up with myself. Hospitable attitude to have to your husband's relatives. Uh, she gets it from me, Mother. Well, Julia Hartley, of all people. David was right. Isn't it dreadful coming in like this, completely unexpected? Heavens no, that's what family is for. Oh, it's been such a long time. Hello, my dear, hello. Oh, Hartley, you know when you kiss me on both cheeks, I feel just like a French general. Consider yourself decorated. <laughs> Come in, come in, come in. Oh, you have such beautiful tans, both of you. You look so healthy. We spent months working at it. You look fine yourself, dear. David, it's your brother and Julia. Yeah, you don't have to shout it right here. Hello, Hartley. <laughs> Julia, how are you? Hello, Hello, my boy. Good to see you. You look very well, too, David. For heaven's sake, stop cluttering up the hall. Come on in the living room. Oh, we just dropped by to say hello. We came up to visit Nancy Riddle, and we're on our way home. On our way home? Why, well, I thought you were staying over. Hmm. Change of plans. Hello, Mrs. Brown. Oh, that's right. You you know Mama, don't of you? Of course. Claudia is right. You're looking wonderful, Mrs. Norton. Well, look who's here. How is my favorite girl's mother? Oh, hmm? she's fine, too. Well, I'm going up to see why that baby's so quiet. I worry more about them when they don't make a noise. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Anything changed since we've been here? Don't think so. No. Place looks exactly the same. Only somehow it's mellowed. Your living in a house is very becoming to it, Claudia. You hear your brother, David? Why can't you learn to say things like that to me? No, Hartley's pregnant. Yes, you can keep your Cuba and your Nassau and your Rio, my darling Julia. Just give me Connecticut without Nancy Riddle. Why? What about Nancy Riddle? I thought she was a good friend of yours, Hartley. Oh, no, of my wife's. Hartley's being silly. Au fond, he's very fond of Nancy. But aren't you staying over? Oh, uh, Nancy was uh, between servants, and it was impossible. Hartley, oh. it's not very easy to entertain between servants, even old friends like us. No, I'm not criticizing the servants. Anyway, we're on our way back to New York, and I'm not any the sadder for it. You mean you have all your bags in your car and everything, and you have to turn around like a, a, a caravan and go home again? <laughs> Not so terrible. Well, the house is open. We'll be perfectly comfortable at home. And the dinner party tomorrow night is called off? Mm, well, postponed. And don't look so relieved, David. Ooh, did I? I, I? I didn't mean to have it show. <laughs> it showed. <laughs> you know, someday you'll decide to stop wasting your talents, and then you won't feel the right people are so wrong. Well, now that we have seen you, which has been most delightful, since we have to go all the way back to New York, we'd better be on our way, don't you think? Well, yes, I I guess we better had. But you're uh, not yes. going all the way back to New York. Well, oh yes, we are, Hartley. 
But you can't just drop in on your relatives and walk out all in the same breath. Darling, we can't stay any longer. We won't get back to New York before 10 o'clock as it is. And by the time we get to bed and everything... But... No, no, we've got to get going. Besides, we just stopped by to say hello. Julia, it's all settled. You're staying No, right? no, no, we're not. It's sweet of you to ask, but really, we are not staying. We stopped by to say hello, and it is sweet of you to ask, and we are not going to be inveigled. Oh, come on. Well, don't you want to stay overnight? Well, we'd, we'd like to very much. Good. Then it's settled. It's not settled, Claudia. I said it's settled, Julia. You can't come and leave without seeing the baby and the cow and, and Fritz and Bertha. They'll all be terribly offended. Yes, especially the cow. <laughs> you worked your way all the way up here, and you're going to stay be a waste if you didn't. Claudia, you've always been a very convincing woman. <laughs> You're oh. telling me. <laughs> but, Claudia, it's, it's such a nuisance. For whom? Well, for you. Well, it'd be worse for you. You pack your bags, and if you don't stay overnight, you'll have to go home and unpack them. Well, I'd be wild. <laughs> but at least this way, you didn't pack them for nothing. Now, there's logic there. <laughs> but you can't suddenly put two people up for the night. Then why not? Well, because you already have a house full. There's you and David and the baby and Mrs. Brown. Four people are not a house full, Julia. But six are. It's very simple, Julia. Well, I'll wager you haven't even got enough room. Well, then we'll arrange it. Now, let me see, let me see. Mama has the room with the one bed in it, so she stays where she is. The baby's in the nursery, so you'll take our room, Julia. I will not take your room. Certainly will. David and I'll sleep in the study. It opens up. The couch, I mean. How's that, David? Oh, it's fine by me. But it's going to be so complicated for uh, you, Claudia. Nonsense. There's nothing complicated about anything, Julia, except in the head. You're staying, and we're delighted. I hope you are, too. Well, it's all beyond me. To look at you, Claudia, one would think you had nothing to do but put up with surprise visitors. <laughs> I don't know anybody else who could invite two people to stay overnight with such equanimity. I couldn't. Well, that's because my life is so simple. Did uh, you say that your life is simple? Yes, of course. But uh, before Julia and Hartley came, you were complaining about how complicated it was. Well, that's another reason I'm so glad they came, darling. Because the more complicated life is, the simpler it is. Isn't it, David? Simple Simon met a pieman going to the fair. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. As you step into the lobby of your favorite movie theater, you're likely to see a familiar red cooler or counter bearing the suggestion, pause and refresh, have a Coke. It's pleasant to be able to have a delicious, ice-cold Coca-Cola right there before or after the show. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs>